good morning to everyone. Um, so I've been listening to uh, what all the, all the other gentlemen spoke about. And uh, then I'm going to talk to you about totally different things. So it's about, uh, about driving techniques and what I feel that how we can avoid these accidents. Um, uh, being a racing driver, I have learned a lot about driving techniques and how we can avoid uh, accidents. So I think uh, Sri Lanka, as we all see, is one of the national issues. And without spending more money on other things, so I think what we have to initially think as rightly, the Honorable Minister said, we have to prevent accidents. So to prevent accidents, uh, what are the um, easiest ways to uh, do that? So I think uh, mainly as uh, when I'm in Sri Lanka, I drive every day. I don't use a driver, but I drive every day uh, in the city and also in rural areas because I travel a lot. So the main thing I have seen is um, the... Uh, driving behavior of drivers and also especially the uh, motorcycle riders. So I will explain to you why. And um, so uh, I think the main, uh, one of the biggest problems is the buses and the heavy vehicle drivers. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's how they uh, control a vehicle because they don't understand, they are not educated to uh, uh, actually uh, drive one of these vehicles because uh, uh, the biggest issue is the driving school where they get their driving license. So the experience is very less and they only experience accident when they occur it. So and they don't even know why the accident happens because every time when there's an accident, you have to rectify why this happened. Um, so uh, like in, in racing, we have data loggers and uh, although we go up to about 300 kilometers per hour, we exactly know when we have an accident, why it happened. So what I have seen is, uh, although they drive, they don't have a clue about driving. So the techniques. So as I said, to even uh, I would like to later talk to the Honorable Minister and even this public transport uh, councils or members of the authorities. I would love to take them, Honorable Sir, to uh, some place and teach them uh, how a vehicle uh, reacts and how an accident, accident happens. So they can, when they impose these laws, they can understand exactly what happens, what has to be done. So uh, mainly, uh, if you uh, see uh, any vehicle on the roads, uh, I mean, uh, road safety uh, regulations, they have to comply with. In Sri Lanka, most of the vehicles are not roadworthy. I mean, if you take the buses to carry passengers, they are not buses, you know, they're actually uh, lorries uh, or trucks. So when you uh, modify a truck into a bus, the chassis is not meant to go fast or to carry passengers. And then what happens is when you go, so when you do over speeding, uh, you can't control it because uh, no one can control it because that is not meant or built to be a passenger carrier or to go fast. And um, so I think we have to start from their compliance. And if you see the uh, three wheelers, I don't think they are complied to be on the road uh, because uh, they have never done a crash test. As you know, if you do a crash test, uh, no one will survive. So, because there's no safety aspects on these uh, three wheelers. So, I think that is why when there's an accident, we have so many fat fatals, you know. So, uh, and if you see the buses, uh, one of the major problems is if you see the uh, passenger buses that is used by the CTB, also by the private sector, hardly any of the buses has seat belts. You know, in an accident, the most, uh, I think, the effective and uh, I mean to prevent is to have a seat belt, you know, so you don't get that, uh, uh, I mean, when you hit, uh, you don't throw out, you know, I mean, you don't get thrown out or you don't go and hit another uh, seat or other parts of the car or the bus. And also, uh, and also the uh, seat belt is very important. And the neck injuries, you can prevent that by having a headrest. So if you see the buses or many uh, three wheelers or mostly what we use for public transport, doesn't have these safety measures. So I think, Honorable Minister, in time to come, we have to get these things out of the road and we have to have proper buses, you know, so then uh, they'll have better brakes uh, like ABS and things and they'll have the seat belts and they have uh, uh, traction control and they have a lot of new things that we can avoid accidents. So mainly, so what I want to share with you all is when you uh, uh, issue a license in Sri Lanka, uh, unfortunately it's not issued in the proper manner so we should have the first thing is to start with the driving schools like if you see overseas uh, the first driving lesson is on a 
uh, simulate and you know uh, so uh, simulate is not expensive so every driving school if they are to get license they should start with the simulator they should have simulators so what happens is other countries is first you get on the simulator and you start driving on the simulator so you get uh, uh, you can meet with accidents because they are made the programs are made so you, you know when you're driving you get a child coming onto the road so you hit the child but it's on a simulator you know then you have to avoid it so all that can be done when you control the speed so the first few days it's on a simulator and then they will take you to a, a, a premises in the driving school about it's about one and one and a half acres so they have these signal lights climbs you know bridges so they have built it in built inside so then you get to drive there for at least one two weeks you know then you are when your family with everything then only you are allowed to go on the road so i think uh, uh, in the future those are the things that we can look into and uh, as i see every day uh, on the roads it's getting bad to us nothing will i mean even if we develop the roads or anything nothing will stop these accidents as long as we educate the drivers and impose very strict laws because uh, as for my experience the worst is the buses and they don't care because and the heavy vehicles because if you meet with an accident they don't have any injuries unless it goes and hit a, a tree or uh, they fall down from a climb up the hill things as such you know so uh, uh, the bus drivers they don't care so they don't respect anyone and i don't think they don't even know how a bus uh, reacts you know so the vehicle when it's heavier the efficiency of the brakes get less so they have to brake earlier not initial braking you know so and then but what happens is they brake even later than a lighter vehicle so no one can stop uh, uh, accident you, you cannot prevent the accident so we have to teach these drivers uh, the techniques of how to drive in the rain how to drive in the normal uh, roads and uh, blind corners because if you see even in other countries more developed countries uh, when i travel around europe so we take all the normal roads to go to the circuits and they are very narrow but you hardly find accident because of the discipline of the drivers and there's no negligence you know so they know exactly when it's a narrow road or it's a wide road still the accident will happen if the driver is he, he if he doesn't obey the rules you know so he has to know the uh, regulation so i think the biggest problem now here is we have to uh, Uh, impose very heavy uh, 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 fines to the drivers and also teach them how to drive. So I would, as I told you, and also uh, uh, one of the biggest other problems is the motorcycle riders. They overtake you from the left side. They overtake you from the right side. So when you overtake from the le- left side, see if someone is turning into the left, uh, it's blind, you know. So he just turns in right and he comes in straight onto the uh, door. So and uh, as you know the uh, i heard in the previous lectures that uh, most of the deaths are motorcycles because uh, it's the same thing they don't exactly know uh, how to ride a motorcycle i do how to prevent uh, accidents i will tell you a very small example in a motorcycle if you immediately press the rear brakes uh, what happens is the motorcycle slides so it's like first you have to apply the front brakes but i have seen it every time when there's a motorcycle accident what the immediate do is they apply the rear brakes so the motorcycle slides when it slides you fall you know so those things i have seen in driving schools or riding schools they don't uh, teach this uh, small tips you know to avoid accidents and i think even to motorcycle riders i as i told you i'm always on the road they come from the left side they come the right side and they don't have a clue they are not in their senses and some are even uh, talking on their phones you know and so we have to impose uh uh it's it's very difficult you know and i think uh, uh as everyone said it's costing us so much of money uh but uh, i think the st- if we have very good and strict laws on the drivers and riders then we can uh, avoid this and we can actually bring down the numbers very low and also i have to tell you about the roads not not more than uh, building new roads the existing roads especially in colombo I, i'm very sad to say this but even in colombo if you see uh, most of us drive there are a lot of potholes on the main i mean on the middle of the road so what happens is saying a motorcycle rider comes he sees a pothole hardly he cannot avoid it if he avoids it he'll go and hit on another car or else what happens is 
when when the road is not even when the motorcycle tire falls on that potholes he lose the control of the uh, motorcycle and he will go and hit somewhere so first thing i think before we build the new roads in colombo we should and when the road surface is not even you can't control a vehicle especially in the rain because it's not even you know so if you see the best places in colombo the roads are really bad so i think uh, we can uh, we should look into that also but uh, my main idea is uh, the discipline of the drivers it has to be strict laws and i have had the very bad experience because i being a public figure i can't go and uh, speak to them or i can't even scold them you know but one fine day i was really annoyed and i went to the driver and then you know the first thing what happens if you go and talk to a truck driver or a bus driver they come down with the conductor with poles knives and you know they abuse you with fear so we have to bring in laws for that they can't do that you know they are uh, you know when you are a public transport driver you have to have better uh, uh, i mean uh, discipline they can't do that but if, if i have seen many times innocent people get abused their children are in the car they talk in fear so i think for that also we have to impose a rule because they are very dirty the way they do things you know and the way they behave so the children you know uh, uh, they get depressed you know they get depression and the other biggest problem but we have is sound stress you know uh, stress can make someone uh, uncomfortable so you say you are driving and a bus comes from behind and they start you know pumping their horn all the time you know so you get stress it's called sound stress even i get that so what happens is when you get stress uh, you don't focus on driving you might press your accelerator and you can go and hit another person so most of the time uh, accident are caused by others also like if you see i have seen like most of the cars uh, why they have accident is they are trying to avoid a bus coming on to you on your lane so you are going on the left and the bus is has to come on the right but he is coming straight on to you so people you know like even me everyone loves their vehicles you know they they treat as their own part of your family so to avoid that accident and they know how the impact is if a bus is going to hit you so they avoid that so when they avoid that there's no space on the road so either they go and hit on a pedestrian or on a building or on a light post so all these things are happening every day so um what i can do is like uh, uh, i can voluntarily help you all any councils uh, or any uh, government authorities uh, to uh, help you all with this technology or even if you want to have driving schools i can come and explain as you all know i even i was really wanting to voluntarily teach the ambulance drivers how to drive how how to avoid uh, uh, accidents you know because even i just want to ask you all in in uh, when you are a driver the most important thing is uh, to know about a car the behavior of your car how many of you all know what is understeer and oversteer that's the most basic thing to understand from a car when you're driving and how when you brake you should always have your steering straight if the steering is turned and if you brake the car slides so there are small things that we have to teach all these people uh, and i'm willing to do that voluntary i can help you also actually i'm very thankful to the medical association for getting me as a brand ambassador and uh, you know it's our country but i feel that in this country it's easier to uh, impose uh, uh, regulations and law because we are not a huge country we are just 23 million people and uh, if you compare like india and bigger countries it's really difficult but uh, we should and i'm i'm very positive that's why i joined this uh, program that i'm sure that we can stop it but uh if the honorable minister is online i i think we have to immediately act on this so we can save 50 billion rupees um, uh, annum that we are spending unnecessarily for these things so um, what i want to tell is that uh, this can be done and uh, most uh, i think the i i think uh, we we were talking to the police and they said they don't have to deploy they have only about 8000 uh, 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 officers in the traffic organization but in other countries you get the public involved because that's what i said in my previous meetings that let anyone has a uh, smartphone so if someone is doing a offense just take a photo and send it to police so they can have a uh, 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 i don't know within the data they can send and they can have a uh, server and then we can send it to them and they can monitor because when you take a photo uh, the offense is there the proof is there that they have they've done an offense so we have to get the public involved because most of the public no one wants to have accidents they don't want to see fatalities they they want to reduce want this to reduce. 
yeah so uh, what we have to do is uh, these are the things that i want to uh, i mean bring to notice and uh, i can be help you all trying to get these things uh, uh, i mean i can give my expertise and my advice without any uh, uh, i mean voluntarily so we all want to see that this is the biggest problem in it's a national issue i think the worst in sri lanka which we can avoid without any cost you know it's it's a uh, it's the education and we have to impose rules so uh, that's all i have to say now uh, and then i would uh, want to thank everyone who are here today and also giving me the chance to speak to you all and i would love to uh, get along with you all uh, and uh, uh, be a part of it thank you very much